the number of letters in the Latin phrase annuit collectus, which means he approves of our undertaking, you will find that the number of letters in that phrase is also 13. And then if you move to the right side of the map, you'll see the other side of the Great Seal of the United States, which was originally commissioned by the revolutionary uh, leader and founding father Samuel Adams, who is a revolutionary leader, not a beer. <laughs> and you'll see that on the right side is an eagle, because it's Thanksgiving, I should mention Benjamin Franklin said the national bird should have been a turkey, not an eagle. And if you look uh, uh, below the eagle, you'll see that there are uh, a little pendant with stripes. How many stripes? Thirteen. Above the eagle, in the form of a Jewish star, a six-pointed star, are stars representing each of the colonies. How many? Thirteen. In the eagle's right talon, in his right hand, is an olive branch representing peace. And if you count the number of leaves on the olive branch, you'll find 13. And in the left talon, the left hand of the eagle, are, are arrows representing war. And if you count the number of arrows, you also find 13. And in the eagle's mouth is a little ribbon. And in this ribbon is a Latin phrase, E pluribus unum, which means out of many, one. And guess how many letters there are in the phrase E pluribus unum? Thirteen. Now, none of this is by chance. This is because our founding fathers were also numerologists. But is it bad mathematics to say out of many one, in this case that 13 equals one? Well, it's bad in mathematics, but it's good numerology. And how is that? The earliest Americans during the colonial period <coughs> knew the Hebrew Bible very well. They also, a lot of them, knew Hebrew. And they knew what the, Hebrew, what the Hebrew word was for one. Anybody know what the Hebrew word is for one? Echad. And as I mentioned, each letter of the Hebrew alphabet has a numerological value. So the first letter is Aleph, which is the letter number one, the first letter of the alphabet. Chet is the eighth letter, like in Chai, is eight. And Dalit is the fourth letter, and one plus eight plus four equals thirteen. Now, this idea that thirteen <coughs> equals one is the idea that out of the 13 colonies has to come the one nation, which we have today. And if it hadn't happened, then we wouldn't have a nation today. Now note also that Chicago <coughs> is a city where people are of many diverse origins. It is a city of from many one. So is it by chance then that there are how many letters in city of Chicago? <laughs> Four plus five plus two of plus Chicago seven equals thirteen. <laughs> now a family like this one, which contains many diverse personalities. <laughs> <laughs> is also <laughs> from many one. But what is it that binds a family 
like this. What is it that makes <coughs> a family one? It's love. And in Hebrew, the word for love is Ahava. Ahava is all of which is one. He which is five. Ved which is two. And He which is five. And one plus five plus two <laughs> plus five equals <laughs> The neurological equivalent of love, unity, and oneness. So, should we take numerology employed by both our Jewish and American forebearers seriously? Well, that's up to you. But while you're thinking about it, let's return to the number 13 as it relates to this family. Rahm Emanuel is the mayor, city of Chicago. Mayor, city of Chicago. Mayor has five letters, city four, of two, Chicago seven, and what is five plus four plus two plus seven? Eighteen. Amy is the first lady of Chicago. Again, count the letters. First, five, lady four, of two, Chicago seven, equals 18. And many of you might not be here if Ram and Ezekiel and Ari's maternal grandfather had not come to Chicago. What year did he come? 1917. Or 1 plus 9 plus 1 plus 7 equals 18. Now, when Ron first invited me here, I thought you would be celebrating two occasions which rarely come together, Hanukkah and Thanksgiving. But though Ron never mentioned it to me, I learned later that there is a third occasion this weekend for celebration because tomorrow is Ron's birthday. Right. And were I a better numerologist, I should have been able to figure this out. And Ron called to invite me and gave me his cell phone number. Mm -hmm. What does his cell phone number have to do with his birthday? <laughs> <laughs> and with the three occasions you are celebrating this weekend? Well, Ron's cell phone number, which many people who heard I was coming here have tried to bribe me to get that I had. <laughs> These are the last people I want to get back. We just screwed that up. <laughs> 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 you know, what, what is that number? I don't know. What does it have to do with his birthday? He was born on 11 29 59. And 1 plus 1 <laughs> plus 2 plus 9 plus 5 <laughs> plus 9 also equals 27. And if you add up the letters of Thanksgiving, <laughs> which is 12, and Hanukkah, which is 7, and birthday, which is 8, 12 <coughs> plus 7 plus 8 equals also 27. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> so let me return again to 18 and to another lucky Jewish number, 3. 